Hello, welcome to the chapter 12 uh, lecture video. This lecture video is gonna be about pure monopolies. So that's the next market uh, structure that we're gonna be talking about. So in a pure monopoly, we're talking about a, a monopoly where a single seller is the market, right? They're the sole producer. We're also gonna be talking about um, how the and so there's a single so there's no close substitutes is important for this one um, and there are some examples of this out in the real world some close examples maybe there's not a pure monopoly per se but uh, there, there are some that we'll talk about here uh, in in the case of the the competitive right market um, they were price takers. In this case of a monopoly, uh, the monopolist is a price maker, so they do have control over the price. And um, there is a strong barriers to entry. In some cases, monopolies or monopolists get in trouble for actually blocking entry or um, making it harder for competitors to enter the market, and they, they uh, get in trouble for that, at least in the US anyways. So, and then there's also, um, the, the, really the only competition is there's possibly some non-price -co competition, right? So advertising, um, public relations, those kind of things are what the monopolists focus on and not necessarily price. So here's some examples. Uh, like I said, there are some that are, that are public uh, companies, typically regulated like our natural gas companies, uh, electric companies like Idaho Power. Uh, there could be cable television companies like Cable One or um, any other cable companies around. <clears throat> they are uh, regulated. So if they're public utility companies, they are monopolies uh, in uh, kind of in nature, uh, but they are regulated. We'll talk about that at the end of the lecture here. There's also some near monopolies, kind of like Intel with uh, certain types of um, computer chips, right? Processing chips and Whammo. Do you know what Whammo is a uh, kind of a monopoly on? What do they make? It's Frisbees, okay? So Whammo has the patent, they, they make the, they make Frisbees. And so that they're kind of a, like a monopoly on that anyways. And then there's other situations where there might be uh, a monopoly and the, those are so like for example places where franchises are made like for example sports teams professional sports teams have a monopoly in their region or in their uh, in the smaller market in the economy um, so anyways so that's those, those are some examples of monopolies. So when we're kind of talking about these issues, maybe think about companies or sports teams or utilities that are kind of like monopolies. All right, so, so barriers to entry are key to create monopolies, okay? So there's several different barriers to entry that may come into to play. One of those is economies of scale, could be a barrier to entry. This is where uh, a natural monopoly is formed. So as production goes up, right? So as production or the quantity goes up, then, uh, so this is quantity, right? So as quantity of production goes up, then the average total cost uh, goes down. So that's kind of economies of scale. Meaning the more you make, the more profit you're gonna be making right kind of some of that depending on on other factors that we'll talk about here in a minute so there's also besides just that kind of uh, dynamic between cost and economies of scale there are also legal barriers right to entry uh, maybe maybe a certain drug company might have a patent on a certain drug so they have the monopoly on the market or licenses um, there are for example in in some large cities there are only a certain amount of taxi cab uh, shields or licenses that, that are issued. So in those, in that case, um, you know maybe the taxi drivers have more of a monopoly 
um, than if there would be just a pure competitive market and anybody could become a taxi cab driver. Uh, which Uber, right, is definitely causing problems for, for those types of people and, and the cities. Some cities ban the Uber uh, driving app, right? Um, and so, and then there's also ownership of control of essential resources. So if you own like oil fields or natural gas uh, and you're the only one that owns them and does that, there's also pricing and other strategic barriers that go into play basically where you just... Uh, are the first mover and you price everybody else out of the market by by um, because you can right okay so here, here's kind of the idea of I kind of drew it out a little bit economies of scale right the idea is is average total cost is going down as our uh, production rises and so that allows us um, to to possibly get um, stay in the market where others couldn't um, produce at a lower price, right? Or sell sell their product, the same product you're producing at a lower price. So it creates a bit of a natural monopoly, okay? So, um, so, so in, the, in the monopoly, of course, we talked about this before, pure monopolist is the industry, okay? The monopolist demand curve is the market demand curve, so right? So we when we draw the demand curve here, we have our price and our quantity. We draw the demand curve, it looks like this, and that is a single firm, but it's also the market, right? Because the monopolist is the entire industry. The demand curve is down sloping, which is different than when we were doing purely competitive markets, right? In that case, the demand curve was perfectly elastic and it was horizontal. In this case, it's down sloping, okay? And the marginal revenue is uh, less than uh, than the price. Okay, so in that, and we'll see other other graphs here, but the the price is set right right here, right? Marginal revenue looks something maybe like this this dotted line, right? So it's going to be less than the price. So wherever we uh, wherever we decide our, our pricing. It's going to be up here on the demand curve, and price is going to be or marginal revenue will be lower. Does that make sense? Okay, so we've got we've got this dynamic where they're different. And we'll look at some graphs on that. So so um, as we look at our as we go back to our three questions, right? So do we produce, and if so, how much do we produce? And then uh, if we hit the uh, amount that we're supposed to produce, how much profit are we going to be making? Okay. And so this is something that the monopolist thinks about. They have to answer the question just like anybody else. So, uh, so do they produce? Well, for the most part, a monopolist can produce. Um, they typically have an advantage in this situation. So. Uh, for the most part they can but there might be some situations where they choose not to uh, how much do they produce well that's the same okay that is the same the same answer that we get when we're doing competitive right so how much do they produce uh, it's all answered by our marginal revenue equals marginal cost okay equals Right, but cost does not go over revenue. So in this case, this matchup of 82 and 70 is about our closest bet, right? Because when we go up to the next uh, quantity, then we see our cost outstrips our revenue. Okay, so so this uh, level of five is the the prime level, assuming that we can't do like uh, fractions of output. Okay, so this is how much we should produce, right? Is five units right so that's how much so uh, the next question is is how much profit are we going to receive and here's our profit over here and we'll talk about in our next slide how that is calculated okay we can either we can do two ways we can do the total cost or total revenue minus total cost right or we can uh, do our 
average total cost and the price. Okay, so this is coupled up here. Since in the monopolies case, marginal revenue is not the price, right? Do you remember that? So the price is gonna be higher than marginal revenue. So let's take a look at this. Here's the demand curve for the monopoly. Uh, and then we're going to say, okay, for a monopolist to get more profit, it has to lower the price a little bit, right? Okay, so if they if the pro, if the monopolist sells up here, it just sells one unit at a really high price up here, right? Uh, that's not where the maximization of profit is. The maximization of profit will be when marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So it's going to be down here in this realm somewhere, and we kind of see this happening, right? So we see as we go from three units right here down to four units right here, we're gain $132, okay? That's, we're moving from about 140 some dollars for the price of three units to $132 for the price of four, right? So we're gaining an extra $132 is what we're doing. But, there is uh, $30 that we're losing, right? Because for, for the $10, right? This $10 difference in between here, right? We're, we're able to charge that $10 for the first three, right? That's our price. And so uh, as we shift down to four, then that means $10 goes away from each of these previous units because our price has gone down for each one of those. But at the same time, our total, our gain is 132 minus the $30 that we can uh, now not charge for the previous units, right? So we're not gonna charge different amounts for each unit, right? So they're all gonna be identical. So in the end, our total profit from producing one more unit or lowering the price, I would say, so we can sell that one more unit, is actually 102. That's our marginal revenue. Okay? So that's, does that make sense? So 102 is our marginal revenue, or that's the extra revenue we can expect from going to four units and thus our price will be lower as well okay so so marginal revenue again will be less than price okay marginal revenue is less than price okay so the, the but the monopolist is still a price maker but they have to they're kind of a slave to demand and that whole demand curve right so they can produce as much as they want or as little as they want there's still a market out there and if they outprice the market that means that not very many people will demand right so there's still that demand curve that deals with price and quantity so the price the, so the monopolist can set the price through okay and the price is inextricably connected to the quantity right just the law of demand okay the monopolist sets the price in the elastic region of the demand curve. Okay, so this is when we, we talked about elasticity and inelasticity and all that good stuff. Okay, so here is our demand curve, right? Demand curves right here in green. And our elastic or responsive, right? Responsive part of the demand curve is all this right here. And so the monopolist has to set their price somewhere in here, right? The elastic part of the demand curve, okay? Thus maximizing the profit, okay? That's what, that's what they want to do, okay? So this is, this is how they answer the question of how can I maximize my profit, okay? So the answer is, is how much do we produce? And we produce right here. 
where marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So when we find that point on our graph, okay, or in our data, wherever it is, then we, we basically produce at that level and we go up to the demand curve and we find out what the price is. So let's look at this. So here's our demand curve with our marginal revenue. And then we're gonna put in the marginal cost. Okay, so where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, that's where we're gonna produce. And we map that out up to the demand curve. Okay, so that's where we're gonna produce. And from that point, we're able to determine the price. Okay, does that make sense? So we've got to first find marginal revenue because marginal cost. Find the find the um, the same right. Basically, y coordinates, the quantity coordinates up onto the demand curve, and then now we're or x coordinates, I should say, and then go over to our vertical price uh, axis, and we're going to find the price there straight across from where we hit on the demand curve. Okay, does that make sense? So that's kind of that's kind of what it's showing us back here. So we're going to determine the profit maximizing price by extending a vertical line upward, right? And uh, from the from the output determined by marginal revenue because marginal cost. And that will be where we maximize our our profit or minimize our loss and we'll talk about that in a minute. So there's there's two different ways to determine uh, the the actual profit that we uh, that we can realize from this technique. Okay? So one is from using our average total cost, okay? And the price. Okay? So we've got our price minus average total cost okay just like that and then we multiply by the the output or the quantity that we're producing okay and that's going to give us profit or loss whatever it is okay the other way to do it is by taking our total cost and um, our total revenue okay We've got total revenue, we subtract out our total cost, and that is also gonna be our profit. Okay? So there's two different ways to do it, right? So here's, here's the technique, right? So we take our marginal cost equals marginal revenue, go vertical up to the demand curve, and then we go back to our, our uh, price that matches up with the demand curve um, our demand curve spot that we've we've found right from using our marginal revenue on our marginal cost just like this and over oh, they may, they actually there we go and so our price is a uh, 122 dollars okay so there's our average total cost and so then this green area is actually the profit right that's kind of a graphical representation of what the profit is in that case so there's, here's some mis misconceptions which are kind of interesting about a monopoly. They're not necessarily going to charge the high, highest price. At the highest price, right, um, they can't sell that much output, right, enough output to maximize profits. So the profits are too low at such a high price. So the monopolist is interested in total profit. That's what they're talking about. They're not interested so much in price but they are interested in total profit. Although in the end, there is a possibility of loss and the loss would look something like this. Okay, so here's the marginal revenue. Okay, there we go, marginal cost. And we're, then we're gonna go up and find our spot on the demand curve, right? And then across to find our price, okay? Okay, so in, in this case, our average variable cost is below our price. So this is key 
in order to not shut down, right? So this area, if we're looking right here, uh, let me let me do a different color here. There we go. So this area right here, right, where average variable cost is below, right, our price, that's key to not shut down. But because average total cost is above the demand curve, then we're gonna we're gonna experience a loss. Okay, and this is what the loss will actually look like, right? So it's this little sliver right here where the, where the, the average total cost is above the price. So um, so where we're, where we're having our, uh, so this is kind of an, just a comparison between purely competitive markets and a pure monopoly. Okay, and so with with the pure monopoly, if you remember back when we discussed this, uh, right here at equilibrium, right, equilibrium, right here, our consumer surplus, right, which would be up here, and our uh, supplier surplus or our firm producer surplus, right, producer surplus down here, would be maximized, right. In the case of monopolists, this is uh, different. Okay, so we're actually we actually have a price now up here. Okay, and so here's our here's our consumer surplus right here. There's only a few consumers that would actually pay higher than the monopoly is charging in price, but then the producer surplus, or in this case the monopoly, is huge, right? So that's kind of the effects on the market or on the consumer and everything. It's not as efficient and it's not as, um, you know, the, there's gonna be some consumers that are just not gonna buy at the price that the monopoly is charging. That's kind of, that's kind of why there's so many uh, regulations and things in, our, in the US economy that says, hey, we need to control monopolies and we need to help them be more competitive, right? Make them be more competitive in a lot of ways, which is good or bad, it depends on how you look at it, right? And so, um, and, and the main purpose there is, uh, is to uh, help prices stay down and help the consumers have more choice. So, uh, it, but it limits in a lot of cases at the same time, it's, there's always the bad side, which it limits the abilities of the monopolist or the owners of the monopoly, whoever that is, it, it limits their ability if it, they are regulated to uh, maximize their profit. Okay, and so and so in this case, so here's some other effects of a monopoly. So there's there's simultaneous consumption. Sometimes this happens uh, where monopolists, even though they have a monopoly, there's ways for consumers to kind of get around it and consume uh, via the internet, pirating, um, black market, all those different kind of things. So, so that's kind of an effect of a monopoly is people, the price goes up, people still want it, so they'll find a way. Uh, there's also networking effects uh, for monopolies uh, that form monopolies, right? So you can think of Facebook, for example, right? So here's Facebook. And why is Facebook a monopoly? Why don't people use more and more other social networking things? Well, the, the reason is, is because in order to make a, a type of product that Facebook has a more functional and more worthwhile, more people need to use it. So the more people that, that use Facebook, the more likely that it will remain a monopoly, okay? Uh, there's also X inefficiency. Monopolists are, for the most part, lazy, okay? So uh, competitors are always driving their average total cost down. They're always driving it down. They're trying to get more profit. Uh, in many cases, monopolies aren't as uh, mindful of their average total cost. So they are inefficient. And in many cases, there's kind of a X inefficiency or that X component of a monopoly where you can kind of compute the laziness of a monopoly and say if they were competitive, 
This is how uh, different they would run their business, right? And then there, then at very uh, last here, I'll just talk about rent, rent seeking behavior. So monopolies um, tend to like their monopoly power, right? And they wanna keep it. So rent seeking behavior is the type of behavior that happens when uh, they get lobbyists, right? Lobbyists are different types of uh, special interest groups organized to help them maintain their monopoly. So that's kind of rent seeking behavior, right? They want to basically kind of say, hey, we'll pay our rent. You keep us in, in business as a monopoly. So kind of an issue there. Um, are monopolies good or bad? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, let me know. I'm also going to do uh, the workout problem to accompany the, this chapter as well. So we'll talk to you later. Have a good day.